So yesterday, I accidentally deleted my main web server. That's just the day after I had gone through all my disaster recovery processes for the stuff in the studio after I lost power over the weekend. It looks like the theme this week is continuity planning, backups, and DR, so I might as well tell you the whole story. I would have recorded it live yesterday, but the whole thing was caused by me being behind on the other video I posted today about the 16 gig Pi 5. It all started when I was getting this B-roll clip for the Pi 5 16 gig video. I noticed that I had like a gigabyte of free memory and you know, there was a CPU bottleneck, but still I'm paying for two gigabytes, so why not use it all? So basically I nerd sniped myself into deleting my web server. What I started doing was I, I was changing some numbers to see if I could get Nginx and PHP to use all that memory and you know, have a few more processes so my server wouldn't be quite as CPU bound. Uh, I changed some in Nginx settings and that didn't change anything. So, uh, and I, I knew I knew that I was not changing PHP settings for a reason. I just didn't remember what that reason was, but it was in the middle of the day. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pro procrastinate on doing the Pi video. So I'll change this PHP settings. And I ran my Ansible automation and, uh, <laughs> That's when I realized that the reason I wasn't changing any PHP settings was this server was still running Ubuntu 18.04, which is not supported anymore. And because of that, Andrej, who has a repository for uh, newer PHP versions or even older PHP versions on modern Ubuntu releases, um, he kind of deleted those repos because he doesn't support it, which I totally, that's, that's, that's good. I, I'm, I'm happy he does that. He even posts warnings about this stuff like a year or two in advance. So it's on me, totally on me, that I didn't have that server upgraded. Uh, you know what they say, the uh, the shoemaker's children have no shoes. My servers, you know, I tell people how to build servers and manage them, and I use Ansible, and I teach people how to use Ansible. Sometimes I just kind of let things slide, and I let that server slide. So the problem was, uh, I basically nuked the PHP install on that server, and Drupal 8 or Drupal 10, whatever version it is now, I think it's 10.4, it requires PHP 8.1, I think, or it re recommends PHP 8.3. And the version in Ubuntu 18 in the, the main repositories was like version 7 point something. So that wasn't gonna fly. So I was kind of in it now. I, I had to decide, do I want to either compile Linux manually from scratch, which could be challenging on such an old system that is not even supported anymore, uh, or do I want to build a new server entirely and move everything over to it. The nice thing about all this is about a year and a half ago, I was actually thinking about upgrading the server. I just never finished it because who knows why. Um, I actually had done most of that work. There were just a couple little tools that you know weren't working on Ubuntu 2204 at that time, but now I'm running 2404. Anyway, I made the decision, I'm gonna build a new server. And so I started working on that. I spun up a new DigitalOcean instance and um, I started running my playbook and, and everything. And I, I just worked through the, a few of the issues. The nice thing about all this is I'm using Cloudflare. So Cloudflare was caching all of the public website pages, at least the most visited things. And this whole process took maybe an hour or so start to finish. Uh, the bigger thing is when you haven't maintained a web server besides running automatic updates until that was unsupported, basically there's a lot of little things like your certificate management with CertBot or uh, analytics integration with my uh, backend analytics tool that I use, which doesn't require cookies and doesn't require privacy invasive things like Google Analytics. All these different little tools, they integrate with things and you have to make sure that those integrations migrate to the new server correctly. One good thing that I did was I set up a dedicated IP address. Uh, I, I think they call it like a floating IP in DigitalOcean. So that IP address, I could just move over from the old server to the new server. So I set everything up on the new server with my Ansible playbook. I had to tweak a couple things on it. I even fixed a couple bugs in my Ansible roles with Ubuntu 2404. Um, and I found out that MySQL is actually, I had it set to like enable bin logging. So it was like eating up tons of disk space. So I turned that off. I fixed all those little things, got the new server working. And then all I had to do was switch that IP over to the other server and it was up, it was running. The biggest thing was I wasn't too worried this whole time. And I'm, I'm usually not worried if any of my servers blows up because A, I have Ansible automation. So, you know, worst case, even if I need to upgrade like four or five generations, all the Ansible tooling that I build, it's, it's kind of ag agnostic of whatever kind of OS you're running. So if you want to switch OSs or switch versions, most of the time that's not going to be a huge problem. 
Uh, the other thing is I always make sure that I have good backups. I check them, I monitor them. I have backups of all my web servers. I have backups of all my data here. So I wasn't too worried about that. If <laughs> If you ever go through something and don't have a backup, you realize how important backups are, and that's always something that you think about like when you're building things. So I have automated backups every day of all my data on that website. Wasn't worried about that, but I did. I, I basically tarred up the file the same way that my backup does on the server directly and just copied it over to the new one and untarred it in place. I also copied over the Let's Encrypt files because there's a chicken and egg problem when you have a new server that doesn't have DNS pointing to it yet, how do you get the, the certificates, the HTTPS certificates for the server? Uh, it's, not, it's not super easy with CertBot. So I just copied over the Let's Encrypt folder to the new server and then let CertBot pick it up. In the process of that, I, I found some issues like this one. Um, you know, I, I still had to check and make sure if email was working. I had to make sure that analytics was working. I had to make sure that my solar server would allow connections from my web server. You know, at the end of this, I, I started, whenever you, whenever you kind of unearth something, you see all the little bugs crawling underneath it. And I noticed that there was tons and tons of traffic to search pages on my site. And I'm like, well, what is this? There aren't that many people searching on my website's built-in search. I mostly do that for myself. So I nerd sniped myself into learning Go Access. Go Access is a pretty cool tool. I've, I've heard of it many times before, but I've always used other tools. Uh, Go Access just basically you, you feed it uh, a log file from Nginx or Apache, and it spits out you know a bunch of data about that. I'm surprised I haven't installed it before this, uh, but. Again, this was all on the same day that I was trying to finish a video, which Raspberry Pi actually emailed me yesterday while I was editing the video and gave me more information that caused me to have to retest everything. So I nerd sniped myself like three times yesterday. All my own fault, uh, all my own doing. Uh, but in the end, is it a loss? Well, besides the fact that I had to stay up a little bit later last night working on the video, uh, it's not a loss at all. I don't count it as a loss. Every time that I fail, every time I do something really stupid, it's worth it as long as you learn something from it. And in this case, I learned a couple things. One is don't tinker with your server on a when you're on a crunch crunch time deadline. Uh, the other one is actually do your maintenance because if you don't, you're going to get screwed at some point. And uh, the third one is I learned a whole new tool, Go Access. So that was kind of cool. And I fixed uh, one bug on my site. I, I now have CSS aggregation working. So even though it was already one of the fastest personal websites I've ever built, that's running on a CMS but still loads like a static site. Uh, now it's even a tiny bit faster. So anyway, I think you know it, it's fun to share those stories because for somebody that hasn't experienced something where they click the wrong button and delete something or run the wrong command and, and do something wrong, uh, it's good that you can see somebody who's done this for years and years. And I used to manage tons of servers. I you know in my own personal DigitalOcean account, I used to have about 50 servers. Now I'm down to five, and then I have a few more at Ramnode. And I used to manage servers for hosting companies and things. You can still do dumb things. It's it, it, You're never too old or too experienced to do something dumb. So anyway, I thought that was a, a funny thing that happened, and uh, we'll see what happens on Friday.